Here's the deal. Mark Bussey, Chris Thompson, Lee Checkstead. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, hello. We talked about it off the top, victims' rights. Do victims need what was given to them today? Sure, don't they? I was gonna see if you answered no. I, I think really? so, Just, I think. Uh, okay, no, no! <laughs> <laughs> I completely disagree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think one of the problems has been that victims are typically used essentially as uh, tools by the Crown. Yeah. And once a crime is being committed, literally the victim is just there to assist the Crown in prosecuting it. There's no real uh, compassion or idea of restitution or whatnot. Once it's happened, the courts are essentially put through. But remember, the courts are about the criminals. Yep. The courts yeah. aren't about the victims. The courts are trying to find justice, and, and the victims are... A third party but in all this. What which is makes sad, me but... uncomfortable about this is that now the victims are forced to testify. And I think some of them are going to be doing it against their own feelings of personal safety. That spousal. Spouses yes. are for, required to You testify. are now required to yeah. testify against your spouse. And given family dynamics and everything like that, it makes it w might make some of them uncomfortable. And I think that is a very hard line to draw as a yes or no, black or white. Well, I don't think a lot's changed, basically. Well, the rule before was that you couldn't compel a spouse to testify against the spouse, but you could compel anyone else. It's just yeah. now you can't be compelled No, you, you, you can compel, yeah. compel spouses to testify against yeah. each other now. I mean, the concern yeah. is that crimes will go unreported because victims of, of domestic abuse won't want to go forward. The, I thing think that's, that I, the thing that I like, and I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't study law, but I've always thought that so much of the system is geared towards protecting the rights of the accused. And I know that there's a risk that this could, you know, this is the kind of thing that could turn into a slippy, slippery slope, right? And, and go the other way. But I do think that this is an important thing to, to codify it, to codify it, right? To make but it... But just last night we were talking about how lots of times um, restraining orders don't work. And so right now we're saying it's tough to have a restraining order that works, but you're not necessarily going to be protected as a victim. So I agree that the court system is solely meant for um, the accused and their rights, but where do victims' rights come in? No, certainly something that needs to be discussed. I'm uh, interested that the, the legal advice I'm getting says not much has changed here. All this stuff is kind of already there. This is just Stephen Harper playing to his conservative base sure. looking for a few votes. This is, yeah, sure. I mean, this is, you'll notice they call it Harper's Victim, I love that. It's Harper's Victims Bill. You know, like, what, really? The Victims of like Harper. Like, yeah, like the Harper, victims, victims of Harper. That'd be a big Certainly bill. Certainly a few Victims of Harper. <laughs> like, he yeah. came up with this? Uh, Absolutely. Okay. It's a spin. And I'm not really getting legal advice. I'm just talking to lawyers. Uh, distracted <laughs> driving. Ban mobile devices. What do we have to do? I mean, should we put cell phones in our trunks? You know what I did? I, um, I installed a fancy pants system into the car that integrates, called an app radio, that integrates with my phone um, beyond this normal hands-free stuff that I can literally read text, send text, and do all these things because I'm so kind of constantly doing these sort of things. And um, I'm here to admit on television that I still will grab my phone to my wife's utter, like, what are you doing, you know? <laughs> I, it's, I, I do it. the same thing. I, I do it. I've never myself. had a ticket. I pick it up. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. You know, I, I said earlier, I don't trust myself. I do lock my trunk. phone in the trunk. I have two phones really? before on my drive to work and my drive home. I lock it all in the trunk because I do not trust myself. And right. I think it's a really important law to follow. Well, if you actually look at some of the studies, I read one study out of Texas A&M on what happened when people instituted or when, when the powers that be instituted cell phone bans. And it turns out that cell phone usage uh, by drivers went down by about half, but accidents and collision rates didn't really change that much. And what ended up happening was, uh, there's a couple different ways you can explain that. Either people are being more careful when they're driving and trying to text or, or talk on the phone, or people are just trying to hide the phones while they're doing it, which is a lot more dangerous. So the question becomes then, well, if you want to make it three points and a thousand dollar fine for something that you really can't justify as being a public service, then why are you instituting a fine and point system? Then it just looks more like a cash grab under the guise of yes. trying to do something good. Hmm. I do. Th I understand the studies. I admire people for doing them. I think a thousand dollar fine would deter me. You know the interesting thing I was thinking about this. There now are people who claim and have been validated by medical practitioners as having an addiction. To, sell, mm -hmm. to smartphones. An addiction. Yeah. 
how will that spin at some point when when that you know like that suddenly gets the whole thing gets complicated like well I was addicted they let me drive with this yeah, thing the if it's illegal if it's dangerous and in the you know if we're if that's the primary role of government to keep us safe <laughs> you know I, I don't know the thing I think would be the best is if you stop letting the people who profit from the rules make the rules i.e. if you don't make it a thousand dollar fine seize their phone for a day yeah. Don't give them a fine, because then it's not in the government's incentive to just make money off it. Yeah. Seize their phone for one day or two days or three days or five days. Then how do you that pay for that bureaucracy? <laughs> that would make me stop. Yeah, I can't. But I mean, I can't I, but going with a phone. ticket, here you go. Pick it I mean, up. Was, shop it, was it in BC that the guy had 26 infractions? Yeah. yeah. That should never, ever, ever, ever happen. No, I mean we can't we Ever. can't get a handle on drunk driving. I can't imagine why we're going to get a handle on. But drunk there are more. Gone down quite a bit. It has gone Still down. There, that yeah, article said 51 deaths from drunk driving in 2012. 81. I drive um, way. I, I I can drive and text way better when I'm drunk. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you can drive and text better than what? you can drive drunk. <laughs> no, no. When I'm I'm uh, loose. I'm you loose. know what? With the old Blackberries, I got really good at thumbing on the steering wheel. All right, TransLink. Somehow they managed to turn a surplus this year, $50 million, thereabouts. Come on, really? Well, you got to look at the numbers. And when people hear surplus, what they really mean is the amount of money that other people funnel into TransLink is more than the amount of money that they spent. But to their credit, if you actually look at the numbers and what the estimated budget was and what their actual budget was, the numbers that they gained were from saving money. It was yeah. less in their uh, their operating cost per service hour came in at seven percent under budget. However, their complaints per million boarded passengers were forty percent over budget. So I don't know if they're just shorting passengers and people are complaining about it, or if that's just a statistical anomaly. Maybe they can turn the forty-seven million into a new poodle statue. But this is Main the Street. same. This is the same organization that can't even figure out how much it's going to cost to put in, you know, the card systems. The so are we, we can't be. Yeah, but we can't be. It can't be that surprising, really, right? I mean, they got their math wrong. Were you expecting them to no, do that? No, I don't think math it's, right? it's no ever, never. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you've got you've got your estimated budgeted forecast, and then at the end of the year, you try and save as much money as you can. Fifty million can. dollars is a pretty big overshoot. Uh, well, not, in the, not in the total budget. Not. Forty-eight million, and, and the budget something like a billion, I think. Yeah. One or, it's two. I admire that they were able to save as much money as they did through the ways that they did it. At the same time, to me, they've kind of cried wolf. Yep. And the next time they're crying, saying, we have no money, we need to raise fares, we need to do all this, yeah. I'm going to say, well... But the system is woefully underfunded. It's also woefully um, inefficient, or not inefficient. It doesn't have enough buses, it doesn't have enough SkyTrain cars, it doesn't yeah. have enough capacity. And they've only saved $50 million, which is nowhere near the budget. So, I mean, really, they are short going yeah. forward to the service levels. That and they have a lot of work to. ahead of them. <laughs> there's, yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of things to shore up yeah, in like the system. Yeah, like they need, you need the a Broadway Broadway quarter. SkyTrain line. The Broadway like quarter has to be fixed. Yeah, sir. Yeah, I know we can get fifty million dollars. You can apply to that. <laughs> no, you they know spent that already this year. That'll oh, they get spent you a it. Block. Yeah. There's 40, 47 million dollars. They can put a new statue somewhere that's along right. Broadway, which I just um, <laughs> that's my jihad today. We're done. <laughs> we are done. Here's the deal, Mark Chris Lee. Thank you very much. Right. <laughs> Coming up on Unfiltered, it's not the inquiry families are asking for. But does a fine of nearly a million dollars feel like Babine Force Products is being held accountable for a deadly mill explosion? There's a new wrinkle in that story. We'll have it when we come back.